Alrighty guys, so here it goes. Casey, Back at Bat by Dan Gutman. I'm sure you've heard the story of Casey, the baseball world sensation whose famous strikeout lost a game and stunned a hopeful nation. Well, if you think that tale was sad, sit down, let's have a chat. And I'll tell you all the story I call Casey Back at Bat. So it was the last game of the season with Mudville tied for first. The players fought all summer for the pennant they thirst. But Rutland shared the lead as well. The team stood face to face to the victor, fame and fortune. To the loser, second place. With Mudville down three runs to one, it was the final inning. Two men were on, but two were out. There seemed no hope of winning, yet they, they would not surrender. Their motto, never quit. Mighty Casey grabbed his bat. It was sure his turn to hit. His arms, his legs, his neck, his lips, his teeth had muscles too. They rippled from his little toe up to his eyes of blue. He sneered. He snarled at Mudville's foes then threw the fans a smirk. Some ladies found him handsome, some thought he was a jerk. The pitcher hurled his fastball, a perfect strike, and then a fan yelled out, hey Casey, are you gonna whiff again? The runners took their places. Once more, the pitcher threw. He nipped the outside corner, the ump cried out, strike two. Again, the pitcher gripped the ball, and gave a forceful fling, Casey brought his bat back and decided he would swing. He swung so hard, it sliced the air, it echoed, then it cracked, when much to everyone's surprise, the ball our hero whacked. That shot might go 500 feet, one bleacher creature reckoned. I showed him, cackled Casey as he rounded first base. The Mudville fans began to cheer, a roar that started growing as they watched the ball go over the wall and then kept on going. It soared by the hills and valleys, ever higher in the sky, past houses, farms, and villages, so swiftly it did fly. It crossed the great Atlantic where it almost struck a bird, but Casey didn't have a clue for he was rounding third. In Italy, an artist thought he made his masterpiece with a painting of a tower and some flowers and some geese. He had to start over when the ball changed the scene. And this, you, and this you see shows perfectly why leaning towers lean. In Egypt, three small children were engaged in some hijinks when a baseball zipping past him knocked the nose right off the sphinx. It ricocheted to where they played and almost hit those kids, but instead it zoomed right by them and straight up the pyramids. In India, two rhinos were lolling in a pond, looked up and saw this baseballs flying across the great beyond. They ate their lunch and snorted, taking time to smack their lips. They hardly seemed to notice until the big eclipse. It flew so fast, it raced through time, some 60 million years to when T-Rex and Stegosaurus roamed the hemispheres. The creatures were quite terrified, so underground they slinked, and now you know how the dinosaurs, in fact, became extinct. In the depths of outer space, an astronaut named Janet shrieked, Eureka, I have found it. I've discovered a new planet. Her partner took a look and told her, Janet, in your dreams, I've yet to see a planet sewn together by the seams. Meanwhile, back in Mud Mudville, total strangers hugged and kissed. Casey crossed the plate and told her por reporters, it's all in the wrist. He hadn't been this happy since the, his moment of birth, but from the upper atmosphere, the ball returned to Earth. Now done, the center fielder had already left the ground and left in white and left 
and left and right, were chatting on the mound. But Mo, the little shortstop, saw a streak come from above. He raised his arm in self-defense. The ball popped in his glove. Oh, somewhere in this crazy world, some kids are having fun. Some are telling knock-knock jokes. Some skateboard in the sun. And some more kids eat hot dogs piled up with sauerkraut. But there's still no joy in Mudville. Hard luck Casey has flied out. And that's the end.